This is episode 69 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. You're not late. You're right on time. And we're glad you're here. This is Rise Up on Family Life. Ooh, this kind of stings a little bit when you hear these two words together. Unhealthy friendships. Mm. Oof. Because friendships, right? Friendships go both ways. And that sting in the unhealthy part can come from either direction. Uh, a mm-hmm. topic that we're discussing today on the Rise Up podcast, unhealthy friendships. What does that speak to you, Tim? Well, it- the first thing it makes me think of is kind of the opposite of what to be thankful for. I've always, it's something I've said for a few years now, actually, that I've been blessed with better friends than I am. So my friends are better friends to me, I generally take it, than I am to them. That's an inspiration to me to be a better friend. It's also kind of, yeah, humbling. But at the same time, it just makes me ask myself, are there those times where I can be the unhealthy friend in a situation? And what even does that look like when there is a friendship that has gotten to a place of maybe it's soured, maybe it's in a place where it's better if it comes to a close. And I haven't had to make that choice deliberately a lot in life, but there have been times where you've seen, I've seen for myself, something where, where you've grown Apart. We say that phrase a lot. We've said sure. the phrase grown apart a lot. And there are people um, where a friendship was really close, shared a lot of deep, significant moments, and meant meant a lot at the time where it was vibrant. And uh, this was a friendship in, in high school, and it was kind of a friend and I who kind of grew a lot spiritually together. But then things change. People grow. People grow apart. Finding, well, the the thing that was there before isn't there anymore. And to try to make it there again isn't going to be something that really works for either of us. It didn't get to a place where it was unhealthy, but it did get to a place, place where naturally grew apart. And there was definitely a time for me where I had to kind of accept that, accept, all right, this this friendship it's not like it wasn't good. It's not like it was fake and that's why it's not here anymore. It's just, it's like anything that grows in life. Sometimes it, it has its time. And as the other phrase goes, that sometimes good things come to an end. So it wasn't per se unhealthy, but it maybe could have been unhealthy if I tried unnatural ways to make it what it used to be. Let's get back to those old days. It's like, no, we're both different people now. We both have different families now. And sometimes we just got to realize Growing apart happens, and that's okay. You mentioned now and then, and I know Ecclesiastes is one of your favorite books in the oh, Bible. I love <laughs> me some Ecclesiastes. Where we get the scripture about everything having a season, and I think God does give us different friendships for different seasons of our lives. You know, when you're at college, or uh, when you're first starting to grow spiritually, or when you know you're a young mom, there are friends who are around you in those times, and then as you grow both physically in age and also spiritually. Sometimes the Lord puts different people in your path, and it's okay if people come and go. And when it happens kind of organically, I think that's a real gift. Uh, I had to make a really hard decision about ending a friendship uh, because it was unhealthy to the point where it was almost toxic. And I would often use the fruit of the spirit as kind of my guide because both me and this other person profess to be Christians. Well, two Christians should have between them love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, right? And when I began to see other things creep up that were not those things, it was alarming to me. And I think I can forgive those things in someone who doesn't know Jesus. You know, uh, it's easy to love your neighbor who isn't a Christian when they behave badly because you go, well, they're not a Christian. Yeah. But when someone is a Christian, when you go to church with them and you see things like jealousy and envy creeping into the relationship, 
you know that's not of the Lord, you know? And so um, what made it really hard is that there was a whole friend group that I knew I was going to have to break apart from in order to kind of get this relationship from being something that was constantly on my brain. And it was it was it was hard and it was sad. And part of the sadness I had was not from losing that unhealthy friendship, but from losing the dream of what I had hoped that that friendship would be. Mm, oh wow. But it just couldn't be. And maybe someday it will be. I don't know if God would ever heal that back up, but it wasn't like a I'm not going to be your friend anymore, you know, schoolyard thing mm-hmm. any or anything like that, but it was definitely a deliberate for the protection of my mental space, I need to walk away. And it's interesting. Um, there's an article at relevantmagazine.com that we have posted on the show notes for this podcast, kind of helping you decide if you should end a friendship. And one of the things it says towards the end is, I mean, it talks a lot about boundaries. And it says maybe the failed friendship is due to your messed up boundaries, or maybe it's due to the other person's junk and their unwillingness to change, or maybe it's a little bit of both. And that can be it. Oftentimes we're flawed, the other person is flawed. And when the two of you get together, it just doesn't work. We are called to love one another, Christians. We're not called to be best friends with one another. Mm. And I think it's okay. This person who I'm not friends with anymore, I would still do anything for. I would still love her in that way. I would give for her and sacrifice for her. But we can't share that mental headspace, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. A peek behind the curtain on these podcasts, we come up with a topic that we all agree on and we have something to offer. But be going into it, we don't know what each other is going to talk about specifically. And you guys have just ministered to me, uh, unbeknownst. You didn't know that because I was. I thought, oh, I'm going to bring up one that's going to talk about an unhealthy relationship and a, a friendship that ended, one that was, you know. And you both talked about that, and it's like, wow, I've learned so much just in the last uh, five or ten minutes uh, about what was uh, a college friend of mine. Met him in college. We became inseparable in college. I was not a believer then, not that that has anything to do with the story, but that's just background, and he wasn't a believer either, but we were just best of friends. I would go to his house on weekends, and he took me on vacations with his family, and we, you know, we were just very, very close, and then after college ended, uh, he sent me a long, I, I want to say a three or four or five page letter of how his life had totally changed spiritually, and uh I didn't really understand it. I was not a believer at the time, like I said, but I didn't really, I couldn't even tell you exactly, but it just seemed a little weird and odd and all that kind of stuff. And I, I was not a good friend. I didn't respond to that letter. We lived states apart and, and I didn't respond. I didn't call him. I didn't write him back. Don't know why. I just didn't. I, I'm not proud of that. I just didn't. And then he contacted me again to say, Hey, I thought we were friends. Oh. I thought we we're in, I was like, Oh, and the more I thought about it, I said, yeah. So I wrote him a letter back of apology. Please accept my apology. I was not there when you needed me. Uh, and it went on and on and on. Mm. And this, I'm talking 30 years ago that this happened. Uh, and we still haven't mended it yet to the point of I tried to get in touch with him a couple of times. No, no success. He did email me once at a former job that I had. And I tried to get back. And we've never connected got to the point of a couple of years ago, it's like, he was still on my heart. And I still, and I, you know, on the internet, you can look up anybody pretty much and and find out where. And I found out some information that could have been him, you know, thought it was him because of background. And I actually got an address uh, in a state that I could go to travelable. And I, so I went and I went, but it was the oddest thing. And I still don't know whether he actually lived there at the time, but as I got into his neighborhood where I thought he may have lived, I had this overwhelming spiritual darkness. Mm. It was just this I had never experienced. It was huh. like it was almost like I was afraid. It's like it was like this voice saying, "Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of there!" Wow. Which was was not what I was expecting. I was wanting to go and maybe just meet up and and mend things. Well, and so I I left. I was just I called my wife and I said, "This is what's happening." She goes, "I would get out of there." Wow. So I left and I still haven't reached him. But just like you, Teresa, it's like I would do anything for him now if mm. we reconnected. So I'm still in the process mm. of going through that uh, lost friendship that at one point meant a whole lot. Mm. It was everything. And 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 I still miss him and I uh, pray for him. And, and boy, it would be interesting to find out, you know, even where he is to meet up again. But yeah, 
Friendships are an interesting journey, aren't they? Hmm. Today is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is Rise Up on Family Life. God never makes mistakes. I still wondered, though, sometimes uh, about—I still have questions, yeah. even though I know God doesn't make—I trust God. Right. But uh, why do octopuses—and by the way, it can be octopuses or octopi. Oh, okay. Either one is acceptable. Okay. I have learned that. Right. Uh, why do they have eight of those things? Eight tentacles. You know, it's like it didn't make any—it's like, why, yeah. why'd you make them with eight, God? Huh. But now it makes sense. Now that I find out that octopuses lay 56,000 eggs at a time, <laughs> and the mom doesn't eat for six months because she spends all of her time protecting the eggs mm-hmm. from would-be predators. So there's eight. It's like, get out of here. Get boom, boom, <laughs> boom. The eight of them, that's, that's why they're probably having right. that, that kind of thing. Got every base covered. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Knock them off. But plus, it, it also comes in handy. I didn't know that octopus was, I, as I delved more into the octopus and find right. out more about them, they have three hearts. Ah, right. Three hearts. Oh. So the eight tentacles really come in handy with the Pledge of Allegiance. Like, <laughs> <laughs> of course we're happy. You're here. Why wouldn't we be? Thanks for listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Tell me what's cooking. Everybody needs to the beat. Tell me what's cooking. Now you're cooking, you're living the dream. Tell me what's cooking. Do you know what you call a tortoise that has two short legs on one side? No. no. A turtellini. Oh, a turtellini. Uh, Man, turtellini. that's like a funny food joke right there. <laughs> that's what that is. And you add some sausage to that uh, turtellini, and you get Nick Finlayson's Nick's Fix You Can Fix. Yeah. Nick, make some sense of all this. Right? Uh, I wish I could. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a quick, easy, kind of like those one of those weeknight dinners where you've got so much stuff going on. And you don't know what to do. This is something quick and easy. This is literally sausage and tortellini. You cook your sausage. You cut them into slices. Mm-hmm. I use frozen peppers and onions from the freezer aisle. Some yeah. sauteed garlic. The sauce from a can. You put it all together. You top it off with some cheese. And you throw it in the oven. You've got dinner. Ah, I love that. With like the peppers and onions, too, it like gives me that feeling of almost a goulash yeah. type situation. Yeah. And I love that because anytime, anytime you can sneak in veggies, I am all for it. Veggies, Absolutely. sauce, and pasta. It's like, okay, what else do I want? It's quite, the, quite the comfort food as well. And yeah. Good leftovers if you make a whole bunch. I mean, you get yeah. a pot mm-hmm. of this and make it leftovers. And you, and you hardly even taste the turtle. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's right. Save a turtle. <laughs> have tortellini. That's what the message is this week. All month Nick has been using his noodle yeah. and the nice thing about Pasta Boy it helps to make your shopping dollars go a little bit yes. further mm-hmm. and it uh, doesn't have to be boring though. We've got a great collection of recipes all featuring pasta this month. You can check them all out online at familylife.org with Nick's Picks You Can Fix. Yeah, Surprise, these- Therese, you didn't use this. That I thought you oh. were going to say sometime. Go ahead. I never saw such a thing. Sausage. Wow. sausage. Well, I if never... I used that, it would have been uh-huh. shellfish of me. Yeah, there you go. Well. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. We think. I'm sorry, everybody. They're morning people because they love mornings and people. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. 15 seconds or less. Your positive thought for Positive Thought Thursday. Who's this? My name is Stu, and I live in Sydney Center. No matter what you're going through, remember, God has already won the battle. Amen. Wow, that was five seconds. You did great. You could do that three times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hilda Williams. I live in Montrose, Pennsylvania. I just had a terrific answer to prayer. Got my rescue med for a, an extremely rare disease. Approved by my insurance company. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Great. <laughs> Love you. it. My name's Trisha. I'm from Lancaster, New York. Church in the family of God is alive and well. I've just experienced it as we're moving out, and our church family came and supported us and helped us load our truck. Oh, amen. Yes. Shout so out to the Vine Wesleyan Church in Lancaster. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. All right. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Jennifer and Gasport. Just a month ago, we were able to adopt our daughter after almost five years of fostering her. Her name is Miracle, and her life really is. Mm. How beautiful. That's awesome. That is great. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Praise God. Facing a whole new day is a lot easier when you remember that God is in charge. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. It's homes and gardens in the Word, and the culinary competition is on in the Old Testament. Sarah has not one, but three unexpected guests to cook for today. Tim, that was Abraham's wife doing Under the Pressure. Well, Steve, Sarah is an experienced home cook, but the stakes are very high. 
Her husband was visited by God himself not long ago, and our guest judges today seem heavenly indeed. Hey, speaking of steaks, is that the fattened calf, Tim? Yeah, Steve, it looks like Sarah is sparing no expense. I'm here in Kitchen Central to see how she's handling the heat. Sarah, what are you preparing for the judges today? Well, we're, we're starting with the fresh baked flatbreads. It'll be reminiscent of kind of an Indian naan. And then our main course is that veal cutlet that's getting plated along with cheese curds. And then we're going to finish it off with some freshly squeezed milk. It sounds divine. I'll let you get back to it, Chef. Chef, one minute remaining. It'll be a miracle if I can pull this off, but... It is God we're talking about, so... The main course is served up in your Bible. Get the full episode in Genesis chapter 18. Oh, behind you. Homes and Gardens in the Word with Family Life. 